Hey, this is James Conway, director of The Boogans, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey, guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today is another interview, this time with James Conway, who is the director of one of my all-time favorite movies, a movie that introduced me to the genre, The Boogans. How are you doing? I'm great. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Um, so yeah, my first question was, what are you up to nowadays? Um, I've been directing a lot of sh a show called The Magicians. Um, I'm not sure what channel is on there, but it's a fantastic show about, it's sort of a, a darker, sexier Harry Potter. <laughs> and uh, it's been on for five seasons. It's got a wonderful cast. For those in the audience who haven't watched it, please check it out. The Magicians, it's a wonderful show. So I've been doing that for the last five seasons. Um, and I'm doing a lot of photography for myself. And um, uh, just enjoying life. Awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun. And um, yeah, then to go back to the Boogans, what was it like filming that film? It was great. The uh, um, the company I was with had been doing nothing but family films, and we decided it was yeah. time to move into the R-rated world. And we decided to come up with this movie, The Boogans. And uh, the the first story I'll tell you is the casting of Rebecca Balding, who was the star of the show. Um, we we're living in Park City, Utah at the time. Uh, our company produced a TV show called Grizzly Adams, which was about a man and a bear in the mountains, and we shot it in Park City, Utah. And so I flew back to LA with my associate producer, and we go into a hotel, and we're having actresses come in to audition. And she comes in, and she we chat, and she reads, and she leaves. And I turned to the associate producer, and I said, I could marry that girl. <laughs> Somehow she got cast. Wednesday, the first week of shooting, we go out. That Saturday night, she proposes. And four weeks later, while still shooting the movie, we get married. <laughs> and on last Monday was our 40th wedding anniversary. So wow, congrats. Somehow it worked. Um, so it was great. That, so that mem that's a, 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 a memory and a, um, some memorabilia I took with me and still have. Yes. The <laughs> I don't have the creature, but I've got my wife. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that's... Uh... I think it's a truly inspiring story, you know? It's uh, like probably nobody believed that you guys would be together for over 40 years now. <laughs> That's right. And it does, you know, sometimes it just feels right. And, you know, I was 30, she was 32. Neither one were spring chickens. You know, we had, uh, it was just well, practically love at first sight. Um, and making the movie was a, a, a lot of fun. You know, we, we had a, a good, a good sl slasher script and um, a really good cast. We were in Park City, Utah, where we shot it. That's where I lived at the time. In fact, I have a house there again. We bought a house three years ago and so we awesome. spend our time between Hollywood and, and Park City, Utah. Um, and it was winter and very cold. So in fact, some of those night exterior scenes, exterior of the cabin at night, exterior of driving around, doing different things, it was 20 below zero <laughs> Fahrenheit. So I don't even know what that is, Celsius. It was cold. It was so cold. It was it was hard to get the film to go through the sh the uh, the gate on the camera. Oh wow! I keep imagine. warming warming up the film. Um, but it was a great experience. Uh, though we did have one big mishap. Um, you know the scene in the tunnels in the uh, the cave tunnels where there's an explosion in the house and a fireball comes into the uh, cave tunnel. And when we shot that, it was a set we had built in an abandoned grocery store. And the set was made of, um, a, 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 a pro I'm trying to remember the name of the product, I'm blanking on it now. But what happened was we did a rehearsal and we shot the fireball, it went out, everybody was standing by with fire extinguishers in case anything went wrong, nothing did. We shot the, sh the scene and then suddenly much further down in the set, a fire had broken out. And what had happened is the fire had gotten into the, the cave and gone down and then suddenly broke out. We evacuated the set, nobody was hurt, but in 10 minutes, this the entire building was gone. Wow, that's insane. <laughs> so we uh, recovered from that and then we had to shoot uh, for the last, all the, the other cave interiors, mine shaft stuff in real mine shafts. The luckily was silver mines in Park City, Utah. So we went in three quarters of a mile into these mine shafts and shot for, I think it was three days, but one of them, because we had to get finished to release an actor who had another job, we had to finish, so we shot 23 hours straight one day. Awesome. Well, I, I think um, the the dog, I think uh, the name was Tiger. 
Yes. She deserves an Oscar too because <laughs> she was great. She was great. In fact, that was something I don't think anybody had really killed a dog before in a movie. So that was that was fun for us to do. And it was a very well behaved dog. He did a great job. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and then uh, what are some of your own favorite uh, horror movies? Um, Exorcist. I would classify a horror film. And I love that. I love the Scream franchise. Um, oh, yeah. There's been some really clever ones lately. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of this one. The one where the uh, the young couple is getting just got married, and the, the family is a family that's uh, was in the game game business, and they suddenly do this game on her. Um, Wasn't it she, Ready or Not? Yes, Ready or Not. I loved right. Ready. Or not. I thought that was great. Very clever. Um, there's been some wonderful horror films lately. You know, they can where they can combine, you know, the slasher aspects, good scare stuff, great uh, digital effects. Um, and humor. I always like it. uh, humor in my horror films. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, what are your yeah. favorite ones now? Ooh, my all-time favorite movie um, for like a year and a half, I guess now, almost two years, I would say, has been uh, Intruder from 1989. Really? The, really? Yeah, the, the Scott Spiegel film. Mm -hmm. I There's something about that film, just the, yeah, the old atmosphere and and like all the characters in the grocery store and stuff. I just really love that. Um, and then of course over here, The Shining. I don't know if you yes. can see it. There yep. you go. Yep. Like that has always been uh, one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. That's a classic too. It is, yep, really good. So those are some of my favorites. Uh, I would say are really good. Great. And um, then here are some uh, like philosophical questions, I guess, kind of. Um, if you ruled the world, what would the world look like? It would be a very happy, peaceful place where people read and went to movies and listened to music and had civil conversations. Sounds like a great world. I would want to live there. <laughs> yeah, that's, about the, that's about the same thing I would do. Um, <laughs> And then uh, if you could change one characteristic about yourself, what would you change? I would slow down more. I get, I, I'm very energetic and I do things quickly and I'm impatient. And if I just took a little more time and was a little bit slower, I think I would enjoy life more. Not that I don't enjoy life. I've had a blessed life and I enjoy life tremendously. But sometimes I find myself rushing through the good parts instead of stopping and savoring them. So I'd like to do more of that. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a good thing, uh, for sure. And then uh, here I have uh, four choice questions, basically. Um, so I have some horror characters or franchises uh, and directors. So first, uh, Wes Craven or John Carpenter? Wes Craven. Tough, question, tough choice, but Wes Craven. Yeah, why would you say Wes Craven? Humor. There's more humor in the Scream franchise than there is in the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, but yeah, that makes Carpenter, sense. Carpenter has shown more diversity in, in his filmmaking and the kinds of films that he makes so far. Yeah. But uh, just, I like Scream more than I like uh, Halloween. Right. Yeah, I guess, um, I mean, like Halloween is, is more serious than, you know, Scream or something. Uh, but then, like, about diversity, he also did Escape from LA, you know? So. <laughs> and the thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, the original Halloween or Psycho? Halloween. I think, uh, you know, Psycho was, the trouble is, if, if you asked me that question when it was made in 54, I might, I think it was 54, I might have a different answer. But because it's so old and it's been, it's become such a trope in terms of horror fans and so often copied, it just seems a little retro. And the plot seems a little well-worn versus Halloween, which sort of reinvigorated the whole slasher thing, but it also gave a, a whole new look and feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree to that. And it had a better plot. I thought. Oh, yeah. I would agree. Right. Um, then a slasher film or a creature feature? Probably a creature feature, just because there's, there's, there's a lot more going on. Your creature features also combine both. You get a lot of yeah. violence 
death and slashing kind of things, but you also have a lot of cool visual effects going on. Oh yeah. I guess you kind of combine it with, uh, with the yeah. movements. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger? That's a tough one. Maybe Jason. Maybe yeah. Jason. Yeah, for me, I got to go with Freddy because um, Jason is always like, uh, he's also kind of copied with the hockey mask and stuff. And there's a little less to him than Freddy. Like Freddy is just one of a kind. So it's true. But in terms of franchise, I would go for Friday the 13th. Right. That's, that's sort of a mixed thing there. Uh, and then final question, uh, what's the best advice you can give to young and upcoming filmmakers? Work as hard as you can. Keep, keep writing scripts. In fact, the, the, the key thing to learn is writing scripts. And the reason is this. When you're not working, you can create a, write a script and show it to somebody. And if it's good, they're going to buy it or give you a chance to make it. If you're a director, you can't do that by yourself. And if you're a producer, you can't do that by yourself. But a writer can create his own work and get paid for it. And by being a good writer, it leads to directing, producing, whatever it is you want to do with the rest of your career. But the other thing is, is to, to study film and work your ass off constantly. You always should be working, thinking. Um, when I was doing television, for years I was a television writer, producer, director. And I always had, even though I had my own series on the air, I had you know, pilots I was writing and balls up in the air, because you never know. Um, to have a long-term career in this business, you have to have lots of ideas, lots of friends, network with your friends, because if your friend, one friend becomes successful, everybody sort of rises with him because he'll start hiring you. And the same goes for you. You're gonna get hired, you'll hire your friends. So the more friends you have and the people you trust around you, as they succeed, you'll succeed. And to keep that, that network expanding as much as you can. Awesome, that sounds like good advice. I'll definitely put that to use then uh, in the future. Good. Awesome. Yeah, is there anything you would like to add to the interview? No, just uh, thank you for the opportunity. Good luck You're with so everything welcome. you do. And please send me uh, your first script, film, TV show, short, music video, whatever it is. I'd love to see it. I'll definitely do so. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks everyone for watching and uh, we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Thanks. All right. All right. Oh, if you start to be to be the light. You again. You again. I know you're not